Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock in for MFT stamps with my monthly Create in Color card. And this time I used the Unicorns and Glitter stamp set. I just thought this would be so much fun to make it look like it's sparkly without using glitter. And if anybody knows me, you kind of know I'm not a glitter person. I certainly love to look at it, but I don't love to get it stuck all over everything in my craft room. But it doesn't mean you can't draw glitter because glitter is not that hard to draw if you have a white pen or if you have a, a colorless blender to go with your Copic markers. And I'm going to start by coloring these two. I've stamped the little girl so she's off the bottom of the card which if you want to keep your scene really simple, then make it look like you have a close-up view of something and have part of the image off the card entirely. And then you don't have to worry about any ground, what she's standing on or anything, because I want this to just be a magical card where she has some anchor. So if she was just floating and there was nothing under her feet, she wouldn't look like she has an anchor, but off the bottom of the card, she would. I used my purple, of course, for the shadow on the skin tone and just went over it with the mid-tone in order to pull it back to more of a flesh color. And I find that I get a more realistic skin tone when I do that. All of these colors will end up looking softer when all the rest of the color gets on here. So if you start with the skin tone and then you find at the end that all of the people that you color end up looking really weak, it might be because the skin tone needs another coat of something just to intensify it because the every color on the card is going to look different based on what colors next to it. So if you have some really strong contrast elsewhere, like I'm getting with this hair, it's going to basically lighten the skin tones by comparison. And a lot of times I'll go back at the end and just give a, a number of areas the once over just to make sure that they pop enough to work with the rest of the card. Now for braids like this, there's all different kinds of approaches you can take to it. I'm trying here to leave a few highlights on some of the sections. If you think about each one of these groupings as a section, then they would each have a little highlight on them. By the time I ended up adding a bunch of color, they sort of all blended into one. There's a little bit of difference in color. And I ended up having to go back in and add some extra darks because everything else just kind of started mushing together. I was trying to go back in and push some of the E13 back in to kind of brighten it up again. And here's where I'm adding the really dark color just in a few places right where those sections of braids meet. And that brought all the contrast right back in. You'll notice that I didn't color a little bit of the bangs on her hair and that's because I wanted to add a little bit of rainbow to it because of course she's a unicorn so she needs to have some rainbow on her. I debated doing rainbow hair but I noticed that other people who've been coloring her have all rainbow hair so you can go watch their videos to find out how to do it. I just thought it'd be fun to do streaks of rainbow in her as well as little bits of rainbow on the rest of the images. Now this little corgi dog was so cute one of the reasons I chose to do the little girl's hair in the browns was because I wanted to do it in the same colors that I did for the dog so that those two would kind of tie together on the card. The dog has more open area on it, so the red, reddish color of the E13 is much more visible. So if you want to have more of the reddish color in the girl's hair, just leave more of the, the light areas but here's where I'm gonna start adding the rainbow. Now rainbow, I find to be a lot easier than a lot of people make it. They try to color every, you know, little little tiny sections. And for me and my old eyeballs, hello telephone. For me and my old eyeballs, it's a little bit easier to not deal with trying to do all the little sections. <laughs> I'm just getting of an age where it's just easier to do some soft blends. So I colored all of the rainbow areas with the yellow first and then dropped in a little bit of pink. And of course the yellow and the pink make an orangey kind of color and then threw in a little bit of a blue that's gonna tie all these other colors together. The blue with the yellow turns into a soft green. And you can go with stronger colors, but I wanted to start with these and then decide later whether I liked 
the soft rainbow colors or if I wanted to do a little bit more than that. So the, the bright blue is going to end up looking dimmer by the time all the rest of it's done as well. That's just one of those things that happens. Like I said, w color is all relative. So once I have the background color in, that's going to change everything as well. But I've got these guys just about done. I decided I wanted to have a little bit of shadow on her dress and a little bit of shadow on the corgi's wings and blended them out with a little lighter gray. I cut these masks out of some masking paper. I use Eclipse tape, but you can use all different kinds of things. You can just use a sticky note if you want. And then I've got my airbrush ready. So it's an air gun that's attached to a compressor under my desk. And I just took three different colors. I started with a darker color up at the top and then a mid-tone blue. And if you were to actually color this with marker strokes, it would be a dark blue. But every color, when you airbrush it, is going to end up looking lighter, unless, of course, you keep going more and more solid, and then it'll look like a darker blue. So in general, you can afford to go with really darker colors when you're doing any kind of airbrushing, because they're going to come out lighter until you start adding less and less um, in the, the lighter areas and heavier layers elsewhere. Now, when I put my masks on, even if I cut my masks perfect, I always end up with little areas around it. And one of the reasons is because the air is brushing over the, the chisel nib. And even if the papers lift just a tiny, tiny bit, just the angle that everything blows at, it's going to not be perfect. So find a color that's lighter than the color that you airbrushed with. You're not going to do the same color because then you're going to end up with big dark blotches. Now comes the fun of drawing your own glitter. You can do it as I did. I started with the colorless blender to add some dots into this nice background and then went in and added a little bit more with the white pen, keeping it really random so there's no real pattern to it and it would just feel like there's glitter flying through the air. I put a little motion lines around the wings of the corgi so he could fly and then I went through with her dress and all the ruffles and covered up the black line with my white pen, which makes them look like they're a little lacier, which adds that a little bit of glittery effect. And then even put a little bit of the white pen on for a belt. And I put a little bit in for her flowers, put a little, of course, a little bit for a necklace, just all different kinds of little touches that can add just that, that little extra bit of sandy to each one of my cards because I kind of can't stop when I start out with the white pen. The corgi did get the pink ears. I know some of you were probably worried about that. And then for my finished card, all I had to do was stamp the sentiment and emboss it and add a couple of paper layers and the card was done. So that is my card for this month. I'll see you again next month. Can't wait to see what the next release is going to be because it's always something fun. Thank you so much for watching. Click the like button. Go visit the blog for more details. And I will see you again next month. Have a really, really great March. And I'll see you in April. Bye-bye.